Welcome to the Center for Health Affairs Board Education presentation, Seeking a Remedy, Growing Need for Nurses Requires Solutions from All Levels. This presentation is based upon the Center for Health Affairs issue brief by the same title, which can be found on CHA's website, www.chanet.org. All issue briefs, as well as their corresponding PowerPoint presentations, are available on our website in the publication section. This issue brief, originally released in December 2007, focuses on the national, state, and local supply of nurses, factors contributing to the growing demand for nurses, how lawmakers at all levels are responding, and additional ideas to stem the nurse shortage. There are three general categories of nurses, licensed practical nurses, registered nurses, and advanced practice nurses. The vast majority of nurses employed in hospitals are RNs. Today, Northeast Ohio hospitals employ more than 15,000 nurses, but just like other hospitals across the state and across the nation, Northeast Ohio hospitals struggle to fill vacancies. More than 3,800 vacancies are expected by 2010. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that by 2014, 1.2 million nurses will be needed across the country. 32,000 will be needed in Ohio alone. In recent years, some progress has been made in improving vacancy rates in Northeast Ohio hospitals. Vacancy rates for RNs are down from 13% in 2001 to about 7% in 2004. Similarly, vacancies for LPNs have also declined, although there has been a slight uptick in APN vacancies. There are a number of factors contributing to the growing demand for nurses. Between 1967 and 2006, average life expectancy increased from 70.5 years to 77.8 years. This creates an increased demand for health care services. At the same time, the nursing population is also aging and the number of new nurses entering the workforce isn't keeping pace. In Ohio, the average age of RNs is 47 and 48 for LPNs. In Northeast Ohio, the median age of both RNs and LPNs is 43. In 2005, more than 32,000 qualified applicants were turned away nationwide due to insufficient faculty, clinical placement sites, and classroom space. Locally, in the 2002-2003 academic year, more than 550 qualified students were turned away from area nursing schools because the programs were at capacity. Salary disparities within the profession also affect the supply of nurses. Many nursing faculty are lured away to clinical settings because they can command higher salaries. Retaining nurses can also be a challenge. Nursing can be a stressful and physically demanding job. Some nurses experience job dissatisfaction because they have high levels of responsibility but feel their profession is not afforded the respect it deserves. These factors can lead to high rates of burnout, injuries, and job dissatisfaction. Nursing students receive instruction from two types of faculty, those who instruct in the classroom and those who instruct them as they are doing their clinical training in healthcare settings. Classroom faculty have a minimum of a master's degree, while clinical faculty have a minimum of a bachelor's degree. While the healthcare industry has always experienced ebbs and flows in the supply of nurses, the convergence of a variety of factors is signaling that the current shortage is more complex and different and that will only intensify over the next 20 years. Finding solutions to the nurse shortage is more important than ever as too few nurses can impact hospital operations. Crowding in emergency rooms is one effect of a nursing shortage. Not only do insufficient numbers of emergency room nurses slow a hospital's ability to treat patients in this area, but shortages elsewhere in the hospital can have an effect as well. When other areas of the hospital, such as the critical care and medical surgical units, are short nurses, it hinders the ability of the hospital to transfer emergency room patients to these other areas and thus exacerbates the problem of crowding. History has proven that measures taken to address the nurse shortage can be successful if given the right political will and motivation. World War II intensified the demand for nurses and helped draw attention to the growing need to address the nurse shortage occurring at that time. Legislation was introduced in response to this shortage that resulted in the creation of the Cadet Nurse Corps. 
This act succeeded in increasing the number of nurses nationally by more than 124,000 between 1943 and 1948. More recently, the key federal response to the nursing shortage has been passage of the Nurse Reinvestment Act of 2002, which focuses on recruitment and retention of nurses. At the federal level, Title VIII of the Public Health Service Act, Nursing Workforce Development, is the primary authorization of existing federal nursing programs. Passage of the Nurse Reinvestment Act of 2002 amended Title VIII and authorized new programs. While the passage of the Nurse Reinvestment Act was a victory for nursing advocates, funding for the new programs called for under the Act has never reached the levels hoped for by the bill's sponsors. Unfortunately, the state has yet to invest significant state dollars or resources to address the shortage. Ohio is one of just a dozen states which have yet to create a state workforce center. However, discussions over the past several years with regional and state workforce representatives across Ohio indicate strong interest in forming a virtual nursing workforce center that will serve a similar purpose. Lawmakers are also beginning to show an interest in addressing the problem. In passing House Bill 119, the 127th General Assembly created the Ohio Nursing Education Study Committee to examine the current nurse faculty shortage and the shortage of clinical placement sites for nursing education programs. After a year of study, the committee submitted a final report which included a number of recommendations specifically tailored to address nursing faculty issues in Ohio. If adopted, these proposed policy changes could be a good first step in alleviating the current nurse faculty shortage. Some states have taken an active role in trying to ensure an adequate supply of nurses. In North Carolina, the state's General Assembly created the North Carolina Center for Nursing in 1991 as an agency whose primary focus is ensuring there are sufficient nursing resources to serve the state's population. Since its inception, the center arguably has created the most comprehensive state-level database on nursing supply and demand. While useful in their own right, these studies are powerful in that they are used to inform policy decisions that impact the state's nursing workforce. For those looking for ways to address the salary disparities that exist between nursing faculty and nurses working in clinical settings, Mississippi offers an innovative solution. The Mississippi Office of Nursing Workforce, the state's nursing workforce center, has been instrumental in gathering and analyzing data on the supply of nurses and anticipated shortages, as well as on nursing faculty workforce data. Benchmarking revealed that nursing faculty earn significantly lower salaries than other southeastern faculty. Data is presented to state lawmakers on a yearly basis in an effort to continue building a relationship of trust and reliability. Being armed with solid data and research demonstrating the anticipated future nursing shortages was key to the success that Mississippi Nurses Association has had in lobbying the legislature for additional funding to supplement nurse faculty salaries. As a result of its efforts, lawmakers approved $12,000 of additional funding per full-time nurse faculty working in public hospitals over 2006 to 2007. NEONI represents the nursing workforce interests of 140 members representing 54 healthcare organizations to create and sustain a strong professional nursing workforce in the Northeast Ohio region. A variety of programs have been created under NEONI to help boost the supply of area nurses. The Career Shadowing Program, a staple NEONI project, allows high school students to experience a healthcare profession by interacting with healthcare professionals in their workplace setting. Since the program's inception in 2002, more than 2,700 students from over 100 area schools have shadowed a nurse or allied health professional at one of 30 hospitals in the region. An impediment to increasing the capacity of nursing programs is the administration of clinical site placements for nursing students. The scheduling of these students can be time consuming for both hospitals and schools of nursing. In response to this problem, NEONI has implemented an online clinical placement program, StudentMax, designed to improve clinical placement capacity, increase access to new clinical sites, and allow greater ease in matching nursing students with clinical placements. 30 nursing education programs and 24 hospitals are now taking advantage of this online clinical placement tool. 
Blueprint for Success, another NEONI project, is a web-based resource that is designed to provide nursing students with a variety of useful tools and information. Whether a student needs help with dosage calculations, is having a personal crisis and requires financial assistance, or simply needs to help preparing their resume, www.neoni.org is a one-stop shop for nursing students. One of the newest NEONI programs is aimed at addressing the shortage of faculty. The Northeast Ohio Nursing Faculty Corps Program, funded by the Robert Woods Johnson Foundation and the Mount Sinai Healthcare Foundation, will create programming to attract and mentor registered nurses to become clinical and classroom nursing faculty. Another unique feature of the program will be to offer intensive education in the use of simulation as a teaching methodology to new and existing nurse faculty in an effort to maximize the abilities of educators to clinically educate nursing students. Hospitals are clearly in a position to gain the most by fostering programs that encourage an adequate supply of nurses. CHA member hospitals have been active in doing what they can to solve this problem. In addition to being involved in Neoni's career shadowing program, one local hospital has a nine-week summer camp to host high school students interested in nursing and also offers paid internships to high school students. There has been a huge movement in hospitals to work with local schools of nursing to assist in the clinical education of nursing students by providing clinical site experiences, preceptors, and even using qualified staff nurse employees as clinical instructors. Virtually every hospital in the region has some type of tuition reimbursement program to allow nurses to further their education or to provide incentive for employees who wish to become nurses. One area hospital has made considerable strides to hold on to mature or retired nurses. Grant funding enabled the hospital to create the Wisdom Works program, which keeps older nurses either employed or involved as volunteers. Another area hospital has thought creatively about ways to retain working parents in the workforce. Several years ago, it instituted the Parent Shift to attract nurses who can work while their children are in school. With shifts as small as two hours, the hospital created this shift as a way to help relieve staff nurses when patient loads are heavy. With all signs pointing to a rising demand for nurses, the importance of finding solutions to address the nurse shortage cannot be overstated. Nurse shortages threaten hospital operating margins because of the associated increase in personnel expenses and can lead to overcrowding and subsequent increased wait times. Having a state nursing workforce center would create a vehicle to provide nonpartisan nursing supply and demand data, research and disseminate successful nurse recruitment and retention techniques, as well as explore strategies to boost the supply of nurse faculty. Addressing the nurse shortage remains one of the greatest challenges to an effective health care delivery system. As the baby boomers approach retirement age, it is imperative that steps be taken to ensure a sufficient supply of qualified nurses. This concludes the Center for Health Affairs presentation, The Growing Need for Nurses Requires Solutions from All Levels. We hope you have found the information useful. Thank you.